Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com, and yep, it's true, Autodesk is killing off 3D Horizontal. So let's talk about what that means uh, for the near term and for the long term, and new tools that we have to replace 3D Horizontal. I thought I would use a part that I commonly use in one of the classes that I do, that is a fixture plate that holds a couple of bottle openers. This isn't a great use of a fixture plate to be honest, but it's, it's meant to be small enough and machinable enough in a class period for everybody to make their own fixture plate and understand how to use Mighty Bike clamps for a two-op operation to machine the bottle opener that you see on the screen. So now that you know what we're trying to make, let's switch from design back over to manufacture and look at a current state of tool paths on this part and see how things are done. So if we run through this quick, I start out by doing a 3D horizontal to remove the hat of material. This is the second side of the part. So there's a hat of material up on top. And then I come with a chamfer to chamfer the edge to get rid of any burrs so that on the uh, machines that we were using in class, we can come with a probing operation and find the exact center point of the machined part. Then we do a 3D roughing operation with a 3 toolpath tool path that goes and machines the bulk of the material away. We follow this up with the thing that I'd like to talk about in this video, a 3D horizontal. And because I don't trust the size of things when they're horizontal, because they're 3D projection tool paths, I always leave a little bit of wall stock on this operation. And then I come back with the secondary operation, a 2D contour, and I finish up the walls to the size I want them to be. So if we look at this 3D uh, horizontal, maybe I'll simulate this. And I want to have no stock on, and I'll set this to all tool paths so we can see sort of what's happening here. Slow down a little bit because I'm not sure how fast it's going, and what you'll see is the annoying thing about this is it doesn't really match the geometry that we're trying to machine. You can see it's just doing a boundary and stepping it over. And towards the end of this toolpath, it always makes this kind of outside trace over all the features. It can also be difficult to get this to machine over open pockets like this, open holes. Uh, so we'd have to create a patch surface in order for it to follow. And here it's on one of those, if I take a look at this, it's barely machining anything right there. And it was probably removed with the previous toolpath. So it's always going around and it seems like it's wasting a lot of motion. And so I've really been a huge, I haven't been a huge fan of 3D horizontal. Uh, a lot of times I like to use 2D contour and just do multiple step overs and limiting that to the stock contours. I'll put a card up to a video where I show the process, but with the way the jam train this part is it's just too much work, too much hassle to get through and do that. And so a lot of times what I do is I revert to this 3D horizontal tool path when we're making this part. And I'm not really a big fan of how this one particularly works. Again, remember, I then have to follow up with a secondary operation of a contour to machine all the edges that I want to do so that I can get it to the proper size that I want. So I'm going to just right click on these two tool paths and I'm going to choose to suppress those for now so they don't show up in simulations later on. And I wanna talk about the new thing that we've been working on. In one of the videos, I was going through some of the uh, preview features and things like that inside of Fusion and you might have noticed that I had a preview feature called flat. Um, that flat preview feature has been given to me as I've been able to access that for quite some time, I've been using it and I'm really liking the flat. And so I thought I would show you how the flat improves things on a part like this. So I'm gonna start up on the 3D menu and I'm gonna click on the new flat icon. You can also find it underneath 3D. And I wanna go and find the tool I wanna to use. <clears throat> so it already came up with tool number two, the three eighths inch flat. Now I wanna to go to the geometry. So one of the things that's very welcome in this tool path is the ability to specify a touch or a void surface. So maybe there's some surface that I don't want to do. Maybe I've already faced off the top of this pin or something like that. So in the previous horizontal, we had to limit things with heights. Here, I could just turn on touch avoid, click on that surface, and it would skip it. On the heights tab, I'm gonna let this strategy find every flat surface from the very top of the model to the bottom of the model. And we're gonna go over to the passes tab. 
Now, we have a couple different types of strategies here. We have pocket and we have parallel. If I hover my mouse over here for a second, I think we'll get a good indication of what the difference between these two are. We'll also see it on the model because I'm gonna kind of do an example of both of these. A couple nice things in here. Um, we can do a continuous machining or not. The tooltips in Fusion, I think, are one of the biggest strengths that the software has. We can also do things like optimize open pockets so the tool starts from the outside and works in, whereas 3D Horizontal currently a lot of times starts in the center of a pocket and helixes in or plunges in. I like a couple more options. I can say I want to climb conventional or do both ways. In this part, I'm gonna say I want to do both ways. And then we'll talk to about some of the other options coming up here. Uh, my step over is currently set to be 0.26. I'm using a Thracens tool to do this. So there's a formula. If I edit the expression, there's a formula for this. However, I could also do something like just specify manual step over a 0.3 or a percentage of the tool that I want to use. We'll go over to the pass or the linking tab. And the only thing I want to change on the linking tab is add a minimum traction. And I'll hit OK and we'll see what we get for a result. So this goes through and it calculates and eventually we're gonna see a pretty decent horizontal tool path, a flat tool path, I guess is what I should call it, where it goes and machines those surfaces. There's very little plunging on this part. Everything starts from the outside in. And I wanna talk about a couple options I may or may not like. Um, it's not machining over this hole. This hole serves no purpose other than I put it in for the video so I could show what this uh, functionality does. So it's machining over this hole. Again, with the 3D horizontal, I would have had to have gone through and added a patch and included that patch if I didn't want that hole covered. With 3D flat, I can come back and edit this. And on the passes tab, I can turn on machine over holes. And this hole has a one inch diameter to it when I created it. So I could just go highlight this and enter in one. And now when I hit okay, it's gonna recreate that tool path and it's gonna machine over the top side of that hole. So now it's not it's not stopping for that hole. I didn't have to add a patch service to do it. I did it right inside of CAM. If I edit this again, I didn't really hit on it much, but because this is uh, has the ability to do either finishing passes, so I could add a finishing pass and specify what I want that finishing pass to be. I can also turn on stock to leave, and because I'm putting Mighty Bytes on this, I might want to overcut my pockets just a little bit to make sure that my Mighty Bytes fit in there. So I'm going to do a radial stock to leave a minus 0.005. Uh, 0005, uh, 5 ten thousandths of an inch. So it cuts my pockets a thousandths of an inch big, but I'm going to set my axial stock to leave to be zero. I'm also going to come up here. This time, I'm going to change the type from pocket to parallel. And when you turn on parallel, it's gonna do an automatic direction. So I'll hit okay, and we'll see what this gives us for a toolpath result. So now it's calculated it. However, when I look at this, it's maybe done something that I don't like. In these pockets, it's gone back and forth. I'd rather it go front to back instead of left to right. And so if I go back and edit this flat, and I go to the passes tab, there is an option for automatic direction. So now I can specify what direction I want this to go. So I know zero degrees is in line with the X. I'm gonna type in 90 degrees, and when I hit okay, I can get a tool path that can now go, and it's all the tool path direction cuts of this are gonna go the direction I want them to go. So now you can see it's gone, and it's done its parallel move on this, and done the same thing to finish up all the flats and it's not wasting all that extra time going around the edges. It's just doing what it needs to. It's starting from the outside. Um, this flat strategy has been a really super nice option. Maybe I don't want to cut this top face right here uh, using the, the parallel strategy. So maybe what I could do is come here and edit this, go to the geometry tab, turn on avoid or touch surfaces, and say I want to avoid this surface completely. And now when I hit okay, it's going to go and avoid that surface. It's gonna uh, calculate all the other surfaces on my part, except for that, that one that I said to avoid. And then maybe I'll right click and I can duplicate this. 
and the new duplicated, I'll edit this, go to my geometry. I'm gonna throw away the surface that I had and instead I'm gonna say I wanna to touch surfaces. I'll choose this surface, go to my passes. Uh, I'm gonna say that I want this to be pocket. We've got all the same parameters. So now when I hit okay, it's gonna do a parallel for all the surfaces other than the one that I excluded. And now for this surface, it's only going to do a pocket surface on that particular surface. So it's, it's easy and nice to be able to, to specify what surfaces you want to touch, things you want to change, um, really liking the new flat strategy. Is it perfect? Nope, but it's software. Software is never perfect and software can always be improved. And Autodesk, in my opinion, in the short while we've been using 3D Flat, has done a good job of making some changes and improving this toolpath strategy. And I think they will continue improving the strategy. So hopefully you guys uh, are able to start using 3D flat. I think you'll like it much better than 3D horizontal. Eventually, I believe Autodesk plan is to remove the 3D horizontal toolpath. However, they'll leave the, um, the, the algorithm and software just won't be accessible as a command. So if you have old parts that you programmed using 3D horizontal, you'll be able to edit those toolpaths. You just won't be able to create new ones. Uh, but the logic will still exist so that toolpaths that you've applied to old parts will still exist and you can make edits to them. In the future, I really don't see myself using 3D Horizontal anymore. I just like the control and options in 3D Flat and that's going to be my go-to toolpath going forward. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comments and as always, thanks for watching.